We're going to finish up with drug allergy, and I'm going to show you some pictures this afternoon of some of the reactions that you'll see to drug allergy. Again, if it's a medication, you try to avoid the antigen and remove it. Um, we're going to treat if it's mostly pyritic with antipyritics. If it's uh, significant, you may want to look at an oral corticosteroid. The difficult one here is the drug fever. And this is typically an antibiotic, and typically the patient's in the hospital. And they're on an antibiotic because they had a pneumonia. But their fever persists, and it persists, and it persists. And after a while, you say, is it the medication, or the, is it I'm not getting you know, the uh, disease underlying in control? And sometimes it takes a bit of gust to say, let's stop everything and see what happens. Usually in about three or four days, the, the patient defervesces, and then you could say, oh, I think it is a drug fever. There's a list of some of the common antibiotics. Um, the interesting thing is the advent or the onset of the fever is variable. What about anaphylaxis? Um, and this is, um, again, you'll see things with stinging insects, food allergies. Um, you can see it to things like latex. Um, so all of those um, may manifest themselves. To be a purist, anaphylaxis is IgE-mediated. If it's anything other than IgE, it's anaphylactoid. So it could be IgG, IgA. The good news is you don't have to be that specific. You don't have to be a purist because the symptoms and the treatment are the same. So whether it's an anaphylactoid reaction or anaphylaxis, we sort of lump it together. Um, and again, food allergies are typical. Um, here are some of the lists uh, that you'll see that. Interestingly, kids that are allergic to things like eggs and peanuts may outgrow that over time. So they may be able to eat it as an adult where they couldn't as a child. Um, usually the, the nuts and things are the ones that persist into adulthood. The treatment for anaphylaxis or things like food allergies, airway maintenance, oxygen therapy, epinephrine, um, what I want to point out here, it's 1 to 1,000 dilution, and it's IM, not sub-Q. The recommendation is IM. Uh, because if you're waiting for somebody that has an anaphylactic reaction or anaphylactoid reaction with hypotension and you're deposited into the sub-Q in the skin, you may get erratic absorption. IM is better. Um, and also, you don't want to um, necessarily use the cardiovascular 1 to 10,000 unless you're going to give it IV. You want vasopressors if they're hypotension. You want to do fluid support. Antihistamines may be useful if they have wheels and hives, and you may need to use corticosteroid. And the obvious way to, uh, to treat anaphylaxis is best to avoid it. Um, so if they've had stinging allergy, insect allergies, they may need desensitization, especially if they're in occupations that put them outside and at risk. Um, they may need to carry EpiPen or EpiPen Juniors, um, usually one for the person, one for the car. Um, the problem is, is that in some places that you have to replace that frequently. If you sit here and put your EpiPen in the, the car glove compartment in Texas, it's going to expire quickly as the heat rises. Um, and they probably benefit from things like medic alert or bracelets, warning that they have anaphylactic reactions. We'll finish up with some food allergies. Again, you typically see this in the first or second year of life if you're going to see it in kids. It peaks by about one year, and then the prevalence starts to decline um, to about 2% overall in the adult population. Um, and the problem is, is that most of these patients who may have a food allergy, it's hard to prove. It's hard to figure out what the food was, because most of us don't eat a single thing once a day. You know, we eat multiple things. So most common things here with the resolutions um, rate and what we'll see going into adults are things like the crustaceans, tree nuts, peanuts, and fish allergies. There are some things that can give you a clue that enhance your idea that this is probably a true food allergy. If they ate this and they start having symptoms in minutes to a couple hours, it, it makes uh, the correlation a lot stronger. Um, if they've taken something and they have it again, and they can pinpoint it, so I ate strawberries and my lips swelled. Next time I ate strawberries, I, my lips swelled, I got hives and I started wheezing, you probably are more likely a food allergy. If there's atopic histories, asthma, or other allergies in the family, it also increases the risk. And there are four sort of syndromes that we'll look at. The first one is the oral allergy syndrome, which is the most common, where patients will have oral manifestations. They'll um, have allergic rhinitis, 
They may get itching in the mouth. They may get itching in the throat. They may get a little bit of swelling of the lips, and then it goes away. Um, Interestingly, a lot of those are um, things like allergens, like raw fruits, kiwi, bananas, tomatoes, that if you cook them, the denaturization of the protein, actually the symptoms resolve. They don't have those. So they can't eat raw banana, but they could eat a um, banana's foster. You know, it's been flamed. Um, There's a a fluid-induced anaphylaxis that's associated with exercise. It's usually hard to predict because the patient will eat, go exercise, and get a reaction. And you say, is this an exercise-induced bronchospasm? But most of the time, it's a wheat substance, and um, usually within six hours of exercise. You can get atopic dermatitis, and you can get asthma as manifestations. There are some patients that will have non-mediated IgE or non-IgE mediated disease, and the most common here would be things like milk, cow's milk. It's a protein-induced enterocolitis. Um, the mnemonic is F pies. I think you could think of cow pies as opposed to F pies might be helpful. Um, and then other things that we we probably lump into non-mediated IgE would be things like celiac disease. We just don't know what the mediator is. Um, You can do skin testing for this. You can do RAS testing for the food allergies. The treatment best is if you're allergic to strawberries, you want to avoid them. If you have problems with recurrent anaphylaxis, they may need to be um, desensitized, and they may even have a medical food challenge. So with that, I finish.